Okay, so then now that we've seen all the, or most of the core mechanics in action, I thought I would show you what this actually looks like in terms of gameplay. Now notice I'm going to go uh, probably pretty fast here for the sake of this demonstration. Uh, so please try and bear with me. Um, I can always slow down and explain something, or if you need something explained, go ahead and post a comment to this video, and I will be more than happy to reply to you. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do shuffle up our decks. So I'm shuffling up the green deck. I've already shuffled up the red deck. Then you would cu uh, cut the deck. So I'm going to cut the deck here. Then I'm going to deal out my uh, control hand, which is six cards. Ooh, red joker. Okay, so I dealt out my control hand, and now we're ready to flip for initiative. So once both players have their control hands and we're ready to go, I'm going to flip a card for the Resurrectionist, which is a 7 ram, and I will flip a 7 ram for the, uh, so sorry, 7 mask for the uh, guild. Now, in the case of a tie, we flip again. I go down to a 3 on the Rizzer side, and it is a 1 for the guild. So the Rizzers are going to get to activate first. This is an alternating activation, so I'm going to pick one of my models, do all of its activations, and it's going to go to the guild player's turn. So I'm going to start with... Uh, I'm going to start with Madam Sybil here, who is going to uh, take one action to walk. Now her walk is four inches, but because Seamus has a rule called Bells of the Ball, that gives uh, friendly bells plus two walk when they're within eight inches of her. So she's actually going to walk, get to walk up six inches. So that will put her six inches up here as one action. Then, as her second action, she's going to go ahead and activate that piece of dynamite. And I will denote that by placing a token on top of it. I'm going to use a burning token so we can denote. So she's going to activate this dynamite. And then she has a... So that was her two standard actions. In addition, though, some models will have a zero action. So she has a zero spell, actually, called Call Bell. Casting cost 15 mask, and it's a range of 14. She's starting with a cast of 6. That means I'm going to need to cast to flip an 8 mask or higher, and I specifically need the mask. So here we go. I flip a 2 mask, which is the right suit. However, the wrong total. I go through my control hand, uh, and I'm not going to waste the red joker on that because it's not that important to me. So I'm going to pass, and the spell is going to fail. It now moves over to the guild player, who can activate their models. So the guild player is going to activate uh, their death marshal, who is going to walk up four inches as one of her actions. So she'll walk up four to here. And then she's going to perform a ranged strike against Madame Sybil. And I will leave these cards here so that you can see. So we're going to do a ranged strike. CB5 against defense 5. So it's basically just the cards telling us who wins at this point. I've got three for the Rezzers, putting them at eight. And I've got ten Ram for uh, Mysterious, putting her at 15. So 15 to eight. Cheating goes to the Rezzer player. She doesn't like that Ram being there. And a difference of seven means it's going to be a cheatable flip. Uh, but she's going to pass. So it's a difference of seven, which means no modifier. Also, the guild player can declare their, their uh, trigger critical strike with a ram on the CB and a ram on her gun. She's going to add plus two to her damage. So it's going to be a straight flip with hard to wound one with plus two damage. So, oh no, black joker. Absolutely nothing happens, even with the other card being as it is. So that was a bummer for the guild player, uh, whose turn is, is over. We're now going to go with the resurrectionist again. Uh, I'm going to go with the Rotten Bell, who is going to move up six to here, midfield. She's now going to try to cast a uh, lure on Mysterious there. So uh, CA8 Crow Mask because of her uh, ability, putting her at 20. She's going to stay right there. She's not going to cheat anymore. The Guild player is going to flip also a 20. Now in the case of a tie, uh, the attacking player wins, as I mentioned. So, so now, 
Mysterious is going to fail to resist this spell. She's going to walk to within one inch of the bell, who can now select, as per the description of her spell, she's now going to get to uh, select which weapon she w wishes to use. In this case, she's going to use Teeth and Nails because it's a higher CB. CB 6 crow damage 1, 2, 4. So lower damage spread, but higher chance of hitting. So she's going to do that. CB 6 against defense 4. Wow. Reser player on fire at 19. Guild player at 12. Difference of 7. Uh, however, uh, neither player is going to cheat in this case because the guild player is hard to win one, so that's going to be a minus one, even though it was a uh, difference of seven. She's going to flip uh, moderate and severe. She has to take the moderate, which results in two damage to the death marshal. So death marshal is going to suffer two damage, if I can ever get this. Whoa, sorry about that. Death marshal is going to suffer two wounds. And that is the end of the bell's activation. Okay, so now it's the judge's turn to uh, activate for the guild. The judge is going to perform a two-action charge, which is a seven-inch uh, move plus a melee strike if it ends up with the model in melee range. So charges must take place. Uh, they typically require line of sight, unless you're a blind sword fighter like Lady Justice. Uh, they require you to move in a straight line towards the target, hopefully, uh, and your goal is to end within melee range. Now notice I can move I can move it not directly towards the target. I don't need to be in base-to-base uh, -base with the target as long as I'm within range of my weapon. So I'm using the long arm in this case. I am within two inches, so we are going to perform a melee strike with the long arm at uh, CB6 RAM, and I flip a nice card, 11 RAM here. The Rotten Bell flips a 9 crow, uh, so that puts me at 17 versus 12, that's a difference of 5. The uh, Resurrectionist player is not going to cheat, uh, but they're, uh, so it's, they're hard to win 1, so minus 1, hard to win 1, but then I charged. So the charge is a plus on the damage flip, so I'm going to go back to a minus 1 flip. I do have the ram here for a critical strike, or plus two damage in this case, because I already have a ram on the sword. So I'm going to flip two cards, and I'm going to take the lower result, which is weak. Weak damage is two, plus the two rams. That is four damage to the rotten bell. Okay, we're going to continue on with our uh, activations. So. Uh, the last move was uh, the judge charging that rotten bell. Now I'm going to go with uh, Seamus, and he is the master, so this is this may be a little bit longer activation. Uh, again, models have two basic actions, but in this case, Seamus has plus one fast. That is one additional general action, and he also has a number of zeros that he can select to do. Uh, he's actually going to select uh, just one of those zeros, because you can only normally take one zero action per turn, plus your two normal actions, plus his plus one fast action. So I think the first thing Seamus is going to do is he is going to fire at uh, the Death Marshal here, Mysterious. Now because the Death Marshal is in combat, uh, the Seamus player is going to have to randomize whether or not the shot is going to be hitting the bell or uh, Mysterious there. So I'm going to flip one card for each of these models, and the lower card is the model that gets hit. So I flip for the bell, I flip a 3. And for Mysterious, I flip a 2. Perfect. So the shot is going to hit the intended target Mysterious. Uh, Mysterious receives plus 1 defense for each model she is in combat with. Uh, so she is going to be at defense 4 against Seamus' CB of 5. I will now measure, should have measured to see if we are in range, but I knew we were before we started and we are definitely within range, so we're going to do another range strike duel, CB5 against defense 5 this time. So I'm at 15 for Seamus, and 15 for the, uh, ooh, yeah, 15 for uh, Mysterious. So now Mysterious is losing the duel. Mysterious will have to uh, cheat a card out of her hand to try to make this miss, uh, so she will cheat in a big card 
a 13, putting her at 18. Uh, cheating goes back to Seamus. Seamus is going to decide that he is okay with 15, but he's going to go ahead and burn a soul stone. So here's our soul stone in action. So 15 plus Black Joker. So the shot is totally going to miss. Uh, 15 to 18. The shot misses for Seamus. Next thing Seamus is going to do is Seamus is going to walk up to this. He'll walk up four here to this piece, uh, towards that piece of dynamite. He's not going to quite get there. Uh, so I guess what he will do is uh, he is going to now try to cast a spell on the uh, mysterious here. So he's going to try to cast uh, Live for Pain. So uh, so Live for... Actually, I'm going to cast the Face of Death. Casting cost 14, starting with a 7 uh, crow here to cast. Uh, so let's... We're, our goal is going to be 7. I flip a 5. Seamus player does not like that. He's going to go ahead and cheat it up to a 17. And the face of death is going to be a four inch aura. Now, how to tell that an aura is when you're looking at the description of the spell, you see that black dot there with the person inside. That's an aura. That means it stays up uh, till the end closing phase. And the four next to it means it's a four inch radius. Terrifying 14, and this replaces the model's terrifying 12 ability. So Seamus now has terrifying 14, and it and does have the uh, mysterious affected by that. So the last activation of the turn is going to be Lady Justice. Now Lady Justice wants to try to charge Seamus because I think Lady Justice can hit Seamus. So before she charges though, she is going to take her zero action spell, Sword Style, casting cost 11, CA 5. So the target number is 6. Flip a card here. Does not go. That's okay. I just so happen to have a 6 on me. I will cheat that in. And now with Sword Style, I'm going to pick one of her effects and I am going to select uh, I'm going to select Vengeance in this case. Great Sword Damage Flips receive an additional plus. So now I'm going to attempt to charge Seamus. So we measure if I'm within range of my charge. It looks like I'm going to be. But now I have to check against his terrifying 14. So now we're going to go into a simple duel using my willpower of 6, and the goal is to beat that 14 or, or hit a 15. So I will need a 9 for this flip. Lady Justice flips. She flips a 6. That's not good enough. So she is going to have to cheat in this 9. Passes the terrifying check. Otherwise, she would fall back. And we definitely don't want to waste her activation doing that. So now Lady Justice is going to charge with two actions. She has a charge of 8 which places her right here. She can actually attack either model, but she declared her charge against Seamus. So now we're gonna do our CD seven against defense four. So I'm at 14 on this side, I'm at 13 on this side. Cheating goes to Seamus. Seamus uh, is going to cheat in, well, nothing, because he doesn't have the cards to get away from this. Lady Justice, meanwhile, is gonna be fine with this. Uh, 14 to 17 because it's going to be a uh, minus 1 for the difference. So we're going to count our, our dual totals again. Minus 1 for the difference, but she charged. That's straight. Hard to wound 2. 1, 2. Great sword. Back to 1. And vengeance. Straight flip. So she has a straight flip, which means we're looking at cheatable damage. She's going to flip a mighty severe, which is pretty powerful with Lady Justice. And Note that she had the ram on her attack, so she can add plus two to her damage, uh, putting her at a total damage of severe, which is six plus two, because one ram here, one ram on the card. She is she did a total of eight wounds to Seamus. That's gonna hurt. So Seamus takes eight wounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And to add insult to injury, Lady Justice has one more attack, you see, because Lady Justice is also a master, but she doesn't have plus one fast. She has plus one melee expert right here on the card. So she has one free action to do a melee strike. She's going to go ahead and do that with Vengeance still in play. That puts her at 16. Seamus Player is going to be at 15. And Seamus Player really doesn't want to get hit this time. So the Seamus Player 
is going to have to cheat in a really good card. So he's going to cheat in a red joker. That's a 14 any suit. So he will charge. He will uh, go up to 18. And just to make sure that this shot is not going to go through, uh, Seamus will burn one of his last two soul stones. 18 plus 2, which is 20. 20 looks pretty good. However, Lady Justice looks at the 20 and says, Hey, guess what? I have a 13 ram here, which I really like. And I think I can really hurt Seamus, so I'm going to cheat in that. So tie us at 20. Then I'm going to burn a soul stone. And now I've got a huge total. So 24, 31 with two rams showing against a total of 20. That's a difference of 11, which gives me a plus one. So I'm at plus one here. Hard to wound two, one, minus one, but then great sword, straight, and then vengeance, plus one. So Lady Justice is at a plus one flip, which means two cards take the higher card and cheatable. So moderate or weak. Moderate's going to do just fine in this case because it is 4 plus 2, which is 6. 6 damage to Seamus, which would normally kill him, except he has an ability called Hard to Kill. Whoa, if it get, there you go. Hard to Kill, which means any attack that would take him down to 0 wounds is going to leave him at 1 wound instead. So Seamus is actually going to only take 3 from that. And Seamus is going to, in desperation, burn his last soul stone to mitigate some of that damage and he's going to mitigate three but in this case it has to be a minimum to one so he's going to mitigate two of those damages which would leave him here at two wounds alright so that's the end of the turn now what happens at the end of the turn is pretty interesting uh, you're going to take the discard pile from that was in play you're going to shuffle that back into the deck and you're going to leave your control hands alone for now. I'm going to do a quick shuffle here. And one more for good measure. And I'll do a cut. And now, once this deck is shuffled, you can look through your control hand. You can keep any or all of your cards. Honestly, I don't like any of these cards for Seamus. I'm going to discard all four of them. And I'm going to deal out my regular control hand of six. Okay. Uh, Lady Justice player is going to do the same. And we'll do one more turn. Should also point out that if this were turn two, the Seamus player has scored a point because the Shamus player has activated one dynamite while the uh, the Lady Justice guild player has not activated any dynamite. So unfortunately though Seamus is uh, just about out of soul stone so we'll see what uh, what lies in store for Seamus. Do a quick cut there. Uh, I am going to discard the three and keep the ten. So I'm going to discard the three, play the three there. Now when you discard cards out of your out of the hand that you shuffled, they become the discard pile for the new turn. So, uh, so Lady Justice kept one card. She's going to deal out uh, five to herself for her control hand. And look at this. Lady Justice got the Black Joker in her hand. Zero value, never can, no suit can never be cheated. Now this is... Some people think that this is a good idea to keep in your control hand. I'm, a, I'm one of those people, so pretty happy about that. That means that I can never flip Joker during, Black Joker during my turn. So now we're going to flip for initiative. Seamus has a 7. Lady Justice has a 2. But, so Lady Justice really wants to go first. I'm going to flip. I'm going to burn one of her other three remaining soul stones to reflip that 2 to try to beat the 7. Let's see what, we, what happens. I flip an 8, which is perfect. Allows me to go first. And I think what I'm going to do is I am going to go with uh, the judge here. So we'll go with the judge. Judge is going to perform a two action flurry. So I'm going to discard one of my cards. And it's going to allow me to do three melee strikes on the bell. So I'm going to do these really quick. 
So really quick, 16 to 14, we'll take the minus two. One, two, three, that's gonna be weak damage. Or three to that rotten bell. So three away. Rotten Bell has one wound left. Judge will go again. 12 to the Rotten Bell's 13. This time Judge wants to hit again. So Judge is going to go up to 16. Rotten Bell player is not going to cheat. That's minus one plus hard to wound. Three cards. One, two, three. That's going to be three again. That's going to kill the Rotten Bell. And the judge is going to not... I'm going to do something that a, a new player would do. Is I'm going to forget one of my... Uh, I'm going to declare critical strike instead of final repose. What that's going to do is that's going to kill the Rotten Bell. The Rotten Bell is going to have one last action with a slow to die. Which gives her a one action before she goes down. And what the Rotten Bell is going to decide to do is pull Seamus out of combat. So the Rotten Bell is going to try to uh, cast Lore on Seamus, which is a pretty good idea considering uh, this is a spell I can control myself. Rotten Bell is going to be at 16 for the cast. Seamus is going to defend with his willpower of 7. He, he's going to flip a 16. Now well, the interesting thing about casting spells on your own models is that you can declare the resist dual tie even if the defender def uh, successfully beats the total. And that's one of the advantages to casting spells on your own model. So, Rotten Bell, so Seamus is going to purposely fail that, walk over to the bell, <clears throat> Bell is going to make an attack with Bash this time, CB3 against uh, Seamus' defense of 4. CB3 puts 15 versus 6. That's not good. So, this is where you can cheat in a low card. So the Rotten Bell is going to cheat in this 2 instead of its 12, putting itself at 5 to 6. So it is going to die. Because Seamus is a grave robber, Seamus will get one corpse counter. And because he's in base contact with it, he's actually carrying the corpse counter. In addition, when a model dies nearby Seamus, he has an ability called Necrotic Menstrations. So he's going to heal two wounds uh, when a living or undead model is killed within six inches of this model, which is nice. So he heals two wounds. He draws one control card. So you see, it's not all that bad that she died. So now uh, the judge player is done because his last action of flurry, his original target, is gone, and so it's no longer an option. But I still have Seamus here. So it's now the Seamus player's turn. He's going to... Uh, take a... well first he's gonna see if he's in combat. He might be. And he is in combat. So that's kind of a pain. Uh, so what the Seamus player is going to do then is the Seamus player will walk up to the judge here. <coughs> Actually he doesn't even have to. Just stay there. He's gonna cast uh, He will cast uh, Arise My Sweet as a zero. This casting costs 17 Crow Crow. Whoa. So I need a 10 Crow to cast this and a Corpse Counter, which I have. That's a 6 Crow. That's not quite enough. So I'll cheat in this 12 Crow. Discard the Corpse Counter. Summon a brand new Rotten Bell within 6. Now this is pretty nice. You see, I can keep... Uh, some of these other models, like Lady Justice out there, occupied with my Rotten Bell. So that was a zero action. He'll take one action uh, to walk up, get in between these two models, uh, and he's going to perform a melee strike on the Death Marshal. So he's going to use his Bag of Tools, uh, CB5 against Defense 4. So we go back to the duels, 18. To five. Not very good for the guild player. Uh, the guild player is uh, doesn't really have anything good to cheat here. So they're going to take a plus one flip, but the hard to win one puts it at a straight flip. 
So Sheamus is going to flip a week. Not good enough for Sheamus though. He wants to cheat in Severe, which he can do because he's at no modifier. So Severe there is 5 damage. That's going to kill the Death Marshal. Death Marshal, slow to die, is going to be to uh, try to hit uh, Sheamus one last time. So, so that puts the Death Marshal at 12. Sheamus is at 11. Sheamus decides, I don't really want to get hit. So cheats in a 12, putting him at 16. Uh, and the Death Marshal uh, is going to perish. So the Death Marshal is going to die. That's another corpse counter. That's another two wounds healed for Seamus. And another control card for Seamus. Alright, so that was one of Seamus' actions. Uh, Seamus' next action is going to be to try to get away from the judge. So he's going to try to move away. Forces a disengaging strike. 13 to 12. Okay, so Seamus is going to try to get away. Uh, it's going to try to do a 17. The judge doesn't really have a good answer for that. So, uh, so Seamus is going to get away as his uh, third action. So now it goes back to the guild player who has Lady Justice here. Lady Justice is going to uh, swing at Sabelle. Or actually do sword style. Needs a 6. Does not get it. Cheats in here, selects that onslaught trigger, decides to use a melee expert action. Oh, needs to check for uh, terrifying. So I've got to check for terrifying 11. Phil, uh, I actually passed that because I'm at willpower 8 right now, so that passes. And here comes the first strike against Sabelle. That is 12. Sabelle is at 14. Lady Justice says enough of this. I'm cheating that in. That's going to put me at uh, 19 to 14, minus 1, hard to wound 1, uh, greatsword. So, minus 1 damage flip. Oh, look at that. And that's what I, why I've been flipping all this time. Normally on a negative damage flip, you have to take the lowest card. But in the case of the Red Joker, you have a 14 any suit uh, and can always be selected, except in cases where the Black Joker is apparent. So, we're going to take that for severe damage which is, uh, and we're going to declare critical strike, so that's going to be 7, plus an additional damage flip of weak, uh, so that's going to be 10 damage to Madam Sybil. That's going to kill Madam Sybil, uh, so she's going to die. Her slow to die is going to be uh, to make an attack on Lady Justice. Uh, she's going to miss. She'll die. Drop a corpse counter. Heal Seamus two wounds. He gets to draw a control card. So, I could fin continue to finish this turn, but you can see how this is going. Uh, this is how gameplay generally looks. It's kind of back and forth. There's duels that happen very fast. As long as you can keep up with the math, it's a very quick uh, means of getting a game in and you can see it just how much mayhem six models can do here especially on such a small board such as this but that's really how the game feels that's how it plays um, at that pace when you really understand what's going on a lot of times you can finish a game like this very quickly generally in the order of uh, maybe 15 to 30 minutes tops so that's a uh, that's one description of how gameplay works uh, we could play this out, uh, but it looks like, I mean, it, th you can see that the crews are fairly well balanced and there's a good chess match going on here, even on such an empty field with uh, only three pieces in play. So, uh, sorry, four pieces in play. So that's it for uh, this demonstration of gameplay. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.